Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. Well, guys, um, okay, uh, today's uh, episode is gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna be about the ENSO, so the ENSO Outlook. And it's probably gonna be titled something like ENSO Winter Outlook. Well, it's this is um, not my winter winter outlook, like the one that I usually do, the preliminary one. This is just based on the ENSO, which is the ENSO, and that is basically like the El Nino, La Nina, neutral stuff, if you're not unfamiliar to that. Um, you know what I'm talking about, but if you, this is your first time hearing about it, yeah, that's basically what it is. It's like the El Nino, and based on what this is predicting, what can we look into the winter, and what will... Uh, come as a result of that so yeah if you like these type of videos if you want to see more of these let me know in the comments um you could let me also know by liking this video and if you are not yet subscribed and the red subscribe button is there please subscribe that is um that is a very uh good thing you could do because it lets me know that you like these type of videos so I could do more of them for you. So let's start off. Uh, an ENSO alert system status, an El Nino advisory. Okay. So basically, an El Nino is present right now, and a El Nino is. Uh, let me search it up. For crying out loud, uh, El Nino. Just El Nino effects on winter, I guess. So let's again. This is the whole like science around the El Nino, La Nino. You can see. Let's go to this one. El Nino typically warmer across the north, wetter and cooler across the south. That's because of the uh, Pacific jet stream is across the tropical jet streams across the south. This one's a bad image. Um, maybe this one's better. You could see for some reason it's also blurry. But their polar jets. There we go. To the polar jets to the north. That's why. All the cold air is stuck to the north, and the southern one is down to the south, which is why all this warmth and dryness and wetness is down here. So not really good for snow production. Um, if you want to see a La Nina, if you're unfamiliar to that as well, um, I wasn't planning to do this, but I might as well because many people might not know about this. So a La Nina pattern, okay, <clears throat> this will also get not blurry, okay, there we go, is when the jet stream, you can see the polar jet stream is... Uh, right further to the south, so this cooler air does reach into parts of the northern U.S. and occasionally, but it does happen, um, actually fairly often. This is like its usual pattern right here, but fairly often it does dip into the southern U.S. and could produce some big snowstorms. So if you live in the southern U.S., you are really hoping for a La Nina, not necessarily an El Nino. But uh, there are ex ex exceptions for everything. The weak El Nino could also be a completely different pattern from a strong El Nino. So it's it's a whole science behind it. And you can see that uh, this one produces more snow because it's wet and overlaps. The Pacific jet and polar jet converge here. And this could produce some big nor'easters, big s snowstorms for the east coast and possibly the south. So very, very, very um, diverse possibilities. And right now you can see that the El Nino is predicted to persist through the Northern Hemisphere summer 2019. So through the rest of June, July, August, and into September. But with lowering odds of continuing through the fall and winter, 50 to 55% chance. Let me tell you guys, this was higher. This just keeps lowering. It was earlier 70, now it's 60, then it was 60, now it's 50 to 55. Soon it's going to be 40, and then I think it's going to drop to more of a neutral pattern. Um, I'll show you that neutral ENSO. Um, impacts and even if we knew uh, <clears throat> guys I want to very make a distinct here statement even if we knew what was going to happen even if we knew whether it was going to be a La Nina or an El Nino so let's say we knew it was going to be an El Nino for sure and it's going to be a weak one we pull up a weak El Nino that's what's forecasted to be right now but let's say that just does not change it just doesn't change, which is unlikely, but this is what a weak to moderate El Nino typically looks like. You could see these two merging jet streams produce big snowstorms, big eastern storms, snowy to the north, wet to the south, mild across the northwest, possibly cold shots, but even if it was a weak El Nino, which, you know, it's not, but it possibly is, we, even if we knew confirmed it was going to be a weak El Nino, this pattern does not always take hold. Last year, um, it was, uh, you know, obviously last year was a bad example because we didn't know if it was going to be an El Nino. We, did, we don't know every year if, whether it's going to be an El Nino or a La Nino. Every year it's kind of a gamble, but even if we did know, these 
only these don't only rely these uh, this mild right here this jet stream up taking this giant ridge up here this southern taking a trough to the south these all just don't rely on the temperatures down to the south in the uh, in the south american coastline uh, this you know this all is very balanced on very small things that may seem irrelevant but may actually impact this so uh right now let's get back onto this a uh a el nino is predicted to sorry uh there's never mind so el nino is predicted to persist I already showed you that and then this is a whole website uh just type in ENCO outlook and you will get to this and you can see there's just whole I mean there's so much to this I don't want to explain all this because we're already six minute video that would be a 30 40 minute video and uh, if I let's go to the more important stuff the so like, uh, latest weekly SST sea surface temperature departures of the El Nino you could see um, <clears throat> Nino 1 plus 2 which is this region right by South American coast is uh, decreasing as you know fallen in terms of temperatures but the rest are still rising the temperature Temperatures, or at least staying constant and uh, if you didn't know this as well uh, the El Nino and the La Nina and everything the ENSO region is right there that's where the Enzo region uh, relies on it's this, right off the South American coast well not right off it extends through basically the whole Pacific Ocean and this is what um, this is what matters uh, this this piece of water right here mainly but there's also a lot of different like here up by Alaska there's there's many different pieces of water that also matter um not just that but that's the one in terms of the ENSO so during the last four weeks a decrease and uh the anomalies was evident uh, this is for the last four weeks this was for the past week I think on um, this first one <laughs> um never mind so this was all for for last four weeks but you can see it's been a little bit it's been cooling off but wait um this was i think the latest weekly um so i think this is just for the past week because uh this doesn't add up if this was rising in terms of you know the, the departures it's above average and then here look at this it's been cooling off so um overall in a more broad pattern we could see a uh cooling but uh apologize if there's a clock in the background that is if you hear that, it's my, it's playing a Christmas song because it's these clocks that we got when I think I was like seven. And every time the hour turns, it plays a melody and I have such good nostalgia with those. But uh, it may be a little bit annoying for you, so I do apologize. Um, this is again, so much stuff. I may need to make another video all about this stuff because there's just so much uh, diversity and variability, if you want to say. Um, this is uh, talking about the MGO Madden-Julian Oscillation, which is, again, a very, very important piece of winter, but at this point, um, I don't um, don't I don't want to cover it because we're already uh, getting into a long... Again, there's so much of this. And uh, you can see they're talking about the specific Nino regions, about the different mythologies. So this is uh, basically the basic, what an El Nino is. Basically, when the ONI is greater or than or equal to uh, 0.5 Celsius above average, and La Nina is when it's negative 0.5 Celsius. And neutral is um, in between those. So, uh, if we look at the p past years, you can see last year it was supposed to develop right around here, the El Nino and it, we were in October, September, and de even December, and it still hasn't developed, but now they're showing it has in the previous historical analysis. But at the time, it hasn't developed. It wasn't developed at that time. So I I really don't know why this is showing um, the red. And you can see, even if it did develop, very, very minimal. 0 0.7, 0 0.9, 0 0.8. That's, that's almost borderline neutral. And if you go to the outlook again, you can see the El Nino decreasing in chances, but uh, October, November... December still in El Nino but uh, it's you know really decreased and it's starting to fight with this neutral right here La Nina doesn't seem likely but a neutral seems the second biggest competitor however guys this could completely turn around um I remember one time I was making a forecast video for summer or for winter and it was two years ago and it was something similar to this, but the El Nino was like this compared to the neutral. It was way out of, you know, blowing the neutral out of competition and it completely switched around. And I think a La Nina occurred. So this is still bound to change. Um, the video is going to pause soon, guys. And we are back. So uh, you can see that what I was talking about is that this is definitely still going to change. 
could we still see an El Nino? Could we see an El Nino and this not change? Yes, it's likely that it will change. It's not likely that it won't change, but we could still see it. But at this point, it seems as if um, it's more likely to be a neutral or uh, a weak El Nino at the be best because you can see El Nino is favored to continue, but with chances nearing 50%. 50%, that's a 50-50, so that's uh, that's a gamble, you, maybe El Nino, maybe not, so uh, fall and winter is a complete gamble right now, but assuming, um, these are the models also uh, showing you what the models think are, is going to happen, what, you know, what, what is going to happen, and you can see that um, some models are starting to show even going into a La Nina, but that's only one model, but the, on the biggest one, CPC, so Climate Prediction Center Council, DYN average and a statistical average, are all showing it maintaining at a uh, almost neutral or very weak El Nino. And this could, obviously this changes because they're models, so they change based on the data they receive. But uh, that's what they're showing as of now. And if a weak El Nino were to occur, this is something that would happen during the winter and fall. Uh, these uh, jet streams would ridge, this one, the polar one would ridge, then they would com combine back together, and this could produce, you could see that um, during the La Nina, uh, these, it's more of one jet stream because they merge together, but during a weak to moderate El Nino, it has some characteristics characteristics of an El Nino where they're um, separating, but also has some char characteristics of a La Nina where they're combining because of the, um, because they're combining because it's uh, a, a because it's a weak El Nino. It's not a full fledged El Nino. So you can see wet possibly across California, mild maybe across the northwest, and snowier towards the east. But this is so far fledged, and this is just kind of for the fun of it at this point. You can see they have these whole things right here. This is a typical El Nino winter, for example. You can see um completely different. This is a typical La Nina pattern, also very different. Um, it's, it's, it's a whole wet, you know, it's a whole, uh, different, it's, it's interesting. That's all I'm going to say. This whole thing is interesting. This whole science behind the El Nino, it's very interesting. And, uh, I don't know what this is. Uh, this is, I think this was from 2014. We could see, uh, you know, I, I don't know why I pulled this up. I just saw this image. And, uh, cause I think I actually remember that, but I'll be making more of these videos. If you want to meet me to make more of these videos, consider, uh, letting me know in the comments box below and I'll, uh, see you guys all in the next episode. See ya. Bye.